destinations that all come together to form the generous space of the wave walk and, uh, and the pier. And the idea was that each of these destinations could be uh, programmed and, and funded and realized over the next uh, decades, but each of them could be sort of a, the starting point of a, of a public path that could have uh, various uh, sort of uh, social uh, functions. It could be like a playground, uh, a small uh, a pavilion uh, food stand. Um, so like a, a variety of little things, little alcoves, little pavilions within the, the park and the, and the peninsula that somehow all sort of come together and, uh, and contribute to this, um, uh, this sort of overall, overall communal pier that becomes the, the pavilion at the end. Thank you, Bjorke. Okay, are you going to give me the clicker? First of all, it's really wonderful being here. Uh, I would come down, I lived in Philadelphia, and we would come down here for Christmases um, in the 60s. And I was just thinking about it, and I think the first time I wow. actually... Louder? Like this? Better? Okay, well, now I can tell you that it was down here in a boat on Tampa Bay where I got my first kiss. I remember that. <laughs> and James Bond was in Yeah, so it's been a while since I've been here. Um, where I really start, my narrative really is going to be focused on the, um, on the upland pier area, the landscape, where the city actually reaches out and intersects with the pier, because it's a very important piece of the whole composition and uh, it's large, it's 21 acres, uh, and it will play a very important role in the whole development of, uh, of, the, uh, of the pier itself. But where we typically start off a project looking at the whole, the big picture, and then we zoom in and get more and more specific, uh, we're actually doing the opposite on this particular project because we feel that for St. Petersburg it's important to start with the, the pier and the wave itself and work ourselves back to the land. And very much as we see here in the diagram, we're actually going east and heading west in terms of our uh, amount of determination that we've actually brought to the table today. The tributary is not only a physical expression of directionality, of entwining and organizing the momentum of the wave, which is a single point of energy and clarity, but it also is expressive of the strategy that our team has in terms of how to develop the upland uh, pier lands. We're starting with a rolling wave that is coming towards the land. It's a beautiful and clear statement about the next generation of Saint, the St. Petersburg Pier. But the way that the wave will actually grab onto the land itself and characterize the space will, out of necessity, evolve in an organic way. In other words, we're saying that to actually dictate how this land is going to be designed um, has to be determined in the future. We've taken this approach so to make sure that the first phase is accomplished at the highest quality and generates an excitement and momentum that will, in turn, actually define this upland area. And through the uses that will happen and generate through the wave, we can better determine exactly how this upland um, portion of, of the landscape can be used. We're actually suggesting through this diagram a framework it's a structure of pathways and destinations that can be fleshed out and determined as we discover a new and expanded use. The framework, expressed as tributaries, will grow like a synaptic connection towards the land itself. We're suggesting a number of activities or follies that create a destination for the branches of the tributaries, but this too 
is a strategy for how the park can be developed. We envision that the pier itself transmogrifies into different incarnations, different spaces, different activities, but these all could be funded as very individual pieces of the park. And we think that this is a way to think about how we can actually uh, create and fund uh, and make this park commensurate to the wave. But a public park, and I've done many, many public parks around the world, has to be designed so that the citizens are part of the determination of how the park is used. Because we all believe that we own this public space. And in fact, we do own public space. So it's very important that we use the, the design process and what really bubbles up from the momentum caused by the wave to really go in and finally make a determination as to exactly how this new territory can be designed and used. So what you're going to see from us is a fairly diagrammatic um, set of suggestions that will be determined as we discover ourselves in the wave. What you're seeing here, is there a point drawn here? Oh, okay, good, thanks. Um, we're actually making suggestions so that this upland territory here, the upland pier area, could in the future perhaps affect a regeneration of the, of the edge along the city. And we're suggesting that so that we can actually make better visual connections from the city out to the water. Because right now the park is very dense, it's beautiful, but it blocks views. So we're suggesting view corridors and kind of re-generating um, and kind of recharacterizing the edge so that it has a relationship to the upland pier area. Yes? Okay. Um, well, I can't do too much about that, so I can use my finger. Oh, thank you very much. Is this better? There we go. Is that better? Yes. All right. Good. The super pointer. Three things in my hand. All right. So our general approach here is to simply have broken down areas that we see in the future could be characterized by native planting and different kinds of habitats that could be explored and really used to make a um, a, a new character for the park. But I also want to say that looking out my window from the hotel, it looks pretty beautiful. It's a, it, the green of it against the water. Our strategy is to think about this as a later phase because right now it looks very good and you need to focus on your peer. But in the future, according to, you know, if we actually institute these various pathways and start to inhabit these areas, it could lead to different habitats and different um, areas of play and experiences. Uh, we've done our homework in terms of looking at salt-resistant trees, wetland species, ground covers, and uh, dune grasses. Um, we're looking at the entry really being characterized by the museum and ornamental trees and gardens. We see that there could be an edge of wetland uh, species. There are areas that really characterize concessions, could be out here, and wine bars, and again, as I mentioned, these various uh, pathways lead to different experiences and activities.